It's something called mutual aid. So those of you who are tracking Maria, mutual aid came up in the news a couple times, but it, it usually works great. That essentially, for everyone else who's been there, is an agreement between one utility and neighboring utilities that they will provide assistance in the disaster. It's a concept that could readily be adapted to sure. cities. Should. Sure. Yeah, should, maybe should. Definitely. Uh, and could also, there's no reason why it can't be university nonprofit partners agreeing to provide mutual aid and coordinate, coordination of that framework agreement and that process is something that Rags could do. Within the electricity, the energy industry, we rely on industry groups, trade associations, to coordinate those agreements among nonprofit utilities and for-profit utilities, respectively. Rise is some, if, as a network, could provide that value to nonprofit and civil society by coordinating mutual aid agreements. I agree. I have a question. Um, is Rise the only utility that a platform that can change uh, public policy or improve no, public so. policy because um, how we're going to <laughs> contribute to local level uh, policies for for yeah, think, implementing uh, all these ideas. Latching on to that, uh, well, uh, John commented yesterday how could RISE function as like you know interpreter of different uh, complex public uh, policies to make it more available and understandable by different uh, stakeholders that are not necessarily engaged in this to actually you know, be more proactive pre-public policy development. Because um, we have to recognize that uh, public policy uh, development, democratic legislative legislation doesn't tend to uh, move, it doesn't move at the same speed as democratic community processes. It tends to move a lot faster and that's not necessary. It has, it has a purpose, but that doesn't mean it's uh, correct. And then Joseph, like. No, I, and I was going to say that one of the concerns that I have about this is a challenge that is presented in terms of in, uh, implementation. How is this going to be implemented? Because as I, as I, been here for two or three days now. I see that we have a vision. There is a there is an issue. There is a problem that has to be solved. And we're trying to build up a like a guiding light of how are we going to approach this? And in which direction are we going to? Right? That's what I think we are doing. We are trying to to declare, I mean, not to declare, but to determine what the mission is, what the goals are, what the objectives are. But then, how is this going to be implemented? What are the measurements that we are going to have, you know, to evaluate and reevaluate if this works or doesn't work? Because for me, the recovery is that something is solved in a fast manner time frame, there is a time limit, and that will help me to measure if this worked or if this, if, if this didn't work. That's why deadlines exist, I think, right? But in the reality, Katrina's recovery is still going on, that was 15 years ago. Yeah. And that's, that's what I said, it's a challenge. The implementation of this is a challenge because we have more obstacles and blocks in the way in trying to achieve the goal than, than creating the goal itself. I mean, we have been working here on this for two days, and we're still trying to figure out how is this going to work? So it's, it's, I don't think that is an easy task. To be no, and I, think, I think you're right, and I think we're not gonna figure it out in three minutes. But what we can do, same as we sort of did a, a, a leap with the mission thing where we had nothing, and we came up with a set of things that they can do, we can come up with a set of things for the rest of the RISE conference to analyze, because in structure, we need more time. This is never gonna work that way. Okay? But at least with the Democrat, again, the, the, some of the big players are not here. So, so what can we bring, and I think we have a lot of them there, that we know for sure should be uh, products or steps or operational efforts without trying to, to fix the entire process, and I think uh, some of that is a, it's, a, it's an analysis where rice fits, basically. I think the mutual aid's not only for uh, the response, but into agreements 
with the people in these disaster areas. I mean, obviously, as you, you're dealing with Puerto Rico, New York, and, and others, that's a prime Virgin Islands as a that's what you're working with now. Not to say that Florida is not going to be part of this, but that's what you're dealing with now. Um, the the statements of knowledge that the university can at least force or try to force public policy. You do have federal agencies of pretty high caliber, so it's somewhat interested. They're all trying to fix their problems. They're all coming with new programs, so they know it's gonna work because they know that a part of them failed, no matter what you're hearing. So we have statements, we have uh, uh, connections, realistic connections, not just the uh, network. You know? we, we need, I mean, I know that you don't want tools, but maybe a tools to define tools or a tool in terms of repository, all these things. I would put them up in the last few minutes and then we can throw them out like, hey, we couldn't figure exactly what the goals are, but we, from what we saw in the conference, and what we learned, this is it. But I, I urge you not to try, that's, I'm trying myself, not to try to use my personal experience to try to pick something that right will can. Well, I, we can, we can just, uh, we don't need to solve it here, we can just present it in all these options and have the rest of the rights community go go ahead uh, and survey monkey, uh, survey monkey or something and rank those and say, okay, over the next five years, we're going to take this as the priority area and then in the next two years, this as another priority area. And we don't need to solve everything. We don't need to solve some things and do it right. So it sounds like in trying to create themes that is what a lot of us have been talking yeah. about, the theory of change uh, must include how do we create enduring networks that preserve community and institutional knowledge, disaster to disaster. We need enduring networks and we need to make sure we capture that. I think that's another good thing. That's a good one. Yeah. And I think one of the yeah. things that we work with, right? Well, that one. So how do we how do we create? Yeah, how do yeah how do we and we do create um, enduring. Um, what did I say? En enduring networks, en enduring and lasting networks uh, of, of community and institutional knowledge, um, you know, disaster to disaster. Yeah, that carries to disaster, actually. Yeah. Yeah. And I think yeah. that it would, in, in that same point, not that we were around, but just to wrap it, I think one of the things that is real is that the people who are involved in rights and committed from the different academia. And the agencies have to do it so they got no choice, but it should present what their commitment really is to what they want to do. Right. And that, at least that document for me, for example, a person from community uh, will be helpful. Uh, I, know, uh, I know I can call this guy and that and that, and that's available. And it'll solve some real things if, from not theoretical. Right. And, and, and along with that, like a sub theme, I'll just say that from my perspective, what I contribute to the conversation is. Uh, um, how do we uh, create, I'm hearing this new term, I don't want to think about it yet, evergreen, uh, <laughs> um, uh, community education platforms. So that, you know, because it's, it's fundamental to face a huge uh, community literacy issue, um, just on anything related to disaster. Yeah. 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 For me, one of the easiest things to fix, so I can't believe it. Yeah. We're about to close. Uh, I think so. Um, I know we've talked about it um, being evidence-based or evidence-informed. Mm -hmm. I think the power of having such, you know, uh, 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 strong uh, institutional leadership uh, from the academy um, that it really lends itself to, um, you know, continuing to foster uh, the evidence-informed or evidence-based practices that get reevaluated um, after they're used or from time to time. Um, you know, we. We, and not, not every solution is going to fit every community, but um, that's something I think will be a Best good practices. Goal. What's that? I, I see this. I think we're lost in the weeds, and we really need to back up and look at the overview of Rice as being a consortium of academic institutions leading with best practices, evidence based uh, information that, that is used to inform what everyone else is doing out in the field rather than replicators. All of these, I mean, in healthcare, I, I'm from healthcare, we have evidence-based best practices, American public health, everyone is doing um, you know, health equity and climate change and all these things. But what I see different about Rice is that it's pulling, it, it's a, a 
high-level academic view that is uh, pulling together. I mean, we just came from sessions of uh, University of Delaware, University of Colorado. They all have various expertise and knowledge and repositories that Rice could then be the clearinghouse of all of that and promulgate best practices. Okay, so um, we're the state for that. Um, what do you have? What do you have there so far? So I want to make sure we got the first part. Academic consortium, providing best practices, evidence, well, a very high-level academic consortium, and it's kind of already stated. I know, I know, we saw. Sense, you know, just leveraging what the academy brings, which is Mark pointed that out. That various areas of expertise, but various regions of the country, various academic institutions are contributing. You know, we had the schools of public health that are contributing the health equity piece, and the schools of sociology that are contributing the, uh, you know, or the, the the mental health piece. And this race can kind of be the, the high-level academic consortium that sorts all of that out, and then provides best practices to the people on the ground from the academy. And the other thing, that, the other thing you said. Important to capture a little bit of space you've got down there in the right hand corner of that little book. And there. exemplars. Yeah, exemplars and sectors. So the expertise that each institution has, bringing that expert, that specific expertise and discipline to bear. Exactly. Okay. We're, we're, in, we're in big time right now. I just, I just want to. Uh, leading and leading, and leading thought leader. Okay. So, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, I, I was going to say, I, I come from an agency, you know, Center for Research Control, so we have to make decisions about funding, and we, you know, many of the worldwide things. And the way we do that, uh, we uh, establish a, a team B. Uh, team B is, is the outside painting of the side of the house. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the team that is going to bring to the experts on flu. Or whatever. What kind of team did you call it? We team call it Team B. Team B or yeah. Red Team? Team B is a, is a, is a Red Team yep. from, from, from the outside. And I see uh, Rice has been the Team B of the International Disaster. We bring some of the stuff. You know, this nonsense sense because we, the very scientists, we are now scientists, we are now uh, uh, researchers. You know, we, we just like to save lives. And, and, and that, and that, and that. That you know, right can be there, refreshing. You know, hey, you know, let them, let's use all the evidence to give them some some tools or, or something to help solve their problem. And that's why I say team they do for us. Red team, blue team, team. 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 They have team the approach. So they have an independent thinking, yeah. Yeah. and we are the directors. We have to team the yeah. say yes, we like that. And it comes in the box. Bring us home. Yeah, so I think this has been a really productive conversation. We have a lot of uh, homework to do and to uh, weave all these comments into some uh, uh, specific and functional metrics. So, um, which we expect to bring you tomorrow. The next, uh, tomorrow session is earlier. It's around 10, you can verify. Well, it's very short. Right? It's only like 45 minutes or something. And it, but it's gonna be here. It's gonna be here. So tomorrow we're gonna to touch upon um, evaluation and and uh, self reflection of what can we do to measure ourselves correctly. Rise as a platform and uh, integration network that we're doing what we need to do, what we want to do effectively. So I urge you to you know start thinking about that. It's boring, and mind boggling a bit. So thank you. And thank you. can we thank our thank recorders again?
que el doctor ve al paciente en la trabajo remoto. Sí. I shared the things with the
So that we can essentially bring the contents of our past archives to the Virgin Islands and figure out how we can make what's happening um, in Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands um, interlinked, relevant to one another, facilitating capacity building in the way, and also interagency. So that we're looking at the people that actually I'm in the World Trade Center as an original So you know very specific. And also, the VI. Jack Hyde? Kind of like. Looks like he's angry all the time. No, 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 no. <laughs> I think I saw Oh, no. Ah, he, he, he's that, you know, he was in community planning in the last building in the VI. He was really happy. Um, um, what is he? Are you talking about Russell? No, Russell was here. I'll get you his name when, you know, we exchange. But I've so run out of cards, okay. so maybe I can either write my contract information out or I can just come talk to you. Exactly, yeah. I'll write your email and then just uh, send me your, because I know, just to see, you know, based on this conversation and what your, you know, your practice has and the years of experience, how can we, yeah, you know, 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 you know,
is completely missing mm -hmm. in the resilience definitions by design. By I mean, design. it's written exactly. by those people who want to make sure that we continue with this. Uh, you know, and people were talking about how do we, how do we leverage academia <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, social justice and disasters. The research is in. It's all entirely in. It's just that we're. Bueno, mira eso, pero a mí sí me cayó. Sí, hay que ahora tener esa reunión porque solo metemos en el programa y tenemos el programa de centro. I think that's important. I think and thank you. I, I, I really love I resonated with yeah. your comments too. Yeah, and I wanted to make sure that. And your name again? It's Jason. Jason, and excellent. I'm yeah. actually, you know, I've got my fig leaf of uh, <laughs> coming to this conference on behalf <laughs> of, of, of the local agencies. Local I don't get into it. Okay, I mean, cool. I, I, look. I'm not a fighter with you. I wanted to like, avoid conflict. I representing the low energy center that is working with a uh, Native American tribe, non-state federally recognized, that is in the bayou of Louisiana. And they actually, during high tide, they have no ingress or egress route to or from the second place. So it's like all the houses are up on stilts, and it's like Galveston. Except this is a native nation. A native nation. And so Have I they existed and lived like that for many years, or this is just new this because is of change. this is climate change. And so what's ended up happening is that they got through the Lowlander Center, advocated for them to get a twenty four million dollar HUD grant mm -hmm. to relocate, which okay. was a terribly painful decision for them to make. Mm -hmm. But nonetheless they they decided this is what they had to do. Um, you know, so I'm, I'm here because Lowlander asked me if I would go to represent, but I know what they were really doing is they wanted to put me in front of all these wonderful all these people, people exactly. and, and figure out, yeah, so. Mm -hmm. Just learn a lot about artists. And, and there's a, uh, have they ever made a where I don't think so. Oh, wow. They, that's, that's yeah. it's very hard, especially in that the state the actually yeah. has switched in you know, so you know how it works. There's some models in Puerto Rico where it, uh, it is within the same community that they're working on the relocation of its citizens and its community members. Where's that? And they developed a land trust where the community, relatives, people that are within the footprint of where our dredging project is going right. to move forward, and then they, there's what in Puerto Rico, there's a little more scientific, similar to Louisiana, right. there's the, it comes from the French and the Spanish, the maritime, the rest of some, so right. that area, that's influenced by the tide, is a public domain, it's not privately owned. So the community is located at that. I need to send an email oh. actually to my boss, but um, where, where the tide is there, that influence, they decided to, uh, the government to allow for them to do part of the development, to move them away from the area where they have the most uh, flooding. Yeah. And basically, they develop a land trust, which is quite unique for the United States. There's Whoa, not that many that's land very trusts. And they're the owners of their property, but the land below it, it's owned by the community. This so, is fascinating. 
So I would so love where, to tell you. Like, I really need yeah, to know they, more they about that. They won like awards because of, of, of the innovation and creativity on how to manage them, and and basically it is the I'm, community I'm working on. I don't think I'm interested in the, okay. on, on this very on this. bit. Was it? I'm I'm working with uh, to develop a. A disaster cooperative that's mm -hmm. going to be working on these types of issues that we're discussing here okay. in central New York. And um, why don't you write down the name of okay. the community? It's with the uh, Anenge, the uh, Canyon. Mm -hmm. But I think if you put it without it, you'll get it. And then in, in English, in Spanish, trust is. The Comiso. Mm -hmm. And you know, they won the UN Habitat Award, so I think there might be, you know, documents in English that talk about their experience. Great. And um, Could there always is translate them over. Also. Exactly. Yeah, San Juan. And, and the incredible thing that they've been able to achieve is that. You know, previous experience within that same community, it was much larger. They were uh, displaced and, and relocated by the local government, put into public housing projects, then the lands were free, and then all these developers got permits to develop uh, high cost and expensive housing. Sort of like and down then displacing in the community. Katrina on Lake Pontchartrain, you have a historically marginalized community predictably affected by flooding, and then lo and behold, you've got multi-million dollar the, housing for billionaires. Mm -hmm. How is he, you know, were they able to get that? So in, in a sense, they're trying to avoid that and making sure, hey, we are the owners of these lands. Wow. We were the ones who, who basically did the filling and, and invaded the land, but at the same time, we want to make sure that as part of, of, of its redevelopment, that we're not taking for granted and that they push us out. So it's, it's a really incredible story. That's um, where the woman over here was talking about best practices. Exactly, I think that and that's, that's a best practice, be, yeah. yeah. And, and truly innovative to have a, a, a land trust. Do you work out of the, the uh, 290? Office. You're in the San Juan yeah, office. Yeah, okay. it's, but I work with, uh, you know, the region Broadway. that I report to is a 290 Broadway. Yeah, yeah. So I used to work over in that. In that building, in that building. That, yeah. Yeah, it's the building funny. is really nice. It's the amazing. Views is our, the views are incredible. Yeah, so so good to talk with yeah. you, and so much we'll, more to discuss. We'll stay in touch. Get in touch with sure. Joel, and I don't okay. know his last name, but yeah, uh, sure, sure not. Yeah, I cannot say it either, but sure not. I, I had met him just one time briefly at headquarters, and I think it's going to be really important. You know, even these types of things, you don't know what the agency is doing at the national level. I didn't know about the adaptation resource center that EPA has, and that it will be allowed, you know, providing to Albany, uh, to SUNY and, and other universities. So it's just incredible that we, we get to see each other here. It's and kind of amazing all that is actually happening yeah. when you get a group like this together. Mm -hmm. and, just, and, and the people I've met, oh my God, everybody's just doing Isn't incredible work. It? Yeah. Really, really inspiring. All right, I'll let you write your email. So <laughs> yeah, I'll, you. I'll be downstairs quickly. Thank yeah. you.